Hi, my name is Muna Andreos, and I co-founded a design studio <laughs> called Daily Tous les Jours. And today I'm here to talk to you about how we've been creating collective experiences in cities around us, and hopefully inspiring you a little bit to do the same. Um, so my work and research has always been an investigation and interest in uh, the, th the things of everyday lives that um, determine how we are and act with each other and together. Um, this is early research I had done in electronics and um, everyday electronics, trying to teach people how to build their own and um, get more kind of acquainted with the technologies that uh, are all around us. And through that process, um, it took me for the first time in the streets to take one project that was a little mobile cart, a mobile unit that had a solar power and a kinetic energy and allowed me to provide anyone with free electricity uh, wherever they were. Um, and I discovered with that project the opportunities that come from being where people are and generating conversations and exchange opportunities uh, right there in the streets. And from there I got kind of the so excited about that that all of my following work that I'll be showing you are examples of projects that we've done um, in various city centers um, over the past few years. So I founded four years ago Daily Tous les Jours. We're a small design studio with a team of interaction designers and uh, technologists. And what we do is create collective experiences that try to engage the public um, into to becoming active participants in the stories that are told around them, as well as in the places in which they live. The way we do it is we start with a place, a community, content, um, and we study that context and try to come up with the best strategy to make a public art intervention in a specific location um, and engage the public through that opportunity. Um, from these context-specific projects, we've been working on developing touring exhibitions, touring installations, uh, which will hopefully allow us to prove that there's also something universal about how we like to be with each other and interact. So the first thing that we try to do is create conversation opportunities. And when we were invited a few months ago by a community bank called Umqua out in Seattle to celebrate the opening of their new store and mostly to help them figure out what the community they were moving into was interested about. And this is a neighborhood of Seattle that's completely transforming and changing and we, it was hard to really assess what would be relevant to them. So we just put a giant sign in their windows that said, we want to have a conversation about blank and invited anyone to use text messaging to submit topics um, that were pertinent to them. And the most important project, part of that intervention for us was to have events and actually host a series of six conversations um, that are happening inside the bank over the course of the next few months, which are a reflection of the collective interest, and to hopefully, hopefully start creating these connections in the real world um, and enable people to act upon um, these topics that they submitted. We're often asked to make places. This is downtown Montreal in an area um, that used to be old Red Lights District and now completely transformed as the entertainment district, the Quartier des Spectacles, which we work a lot with. Um, and them, along with the National Film Board, said this is an area, it's a transit space, it's an exit of a subway. Um, it's not parking lot, but it really looks like an empty parking lot. How can we activate that place? And the content opportunity they gave us was a film by a filmmaker uh, called the Norman McLaren, who worked for 50 years at the NFB reimagining animation. Um, and so we decided to install a film studio right in the heart of that space and reinvent and remake collectively with the public one of McLaren's classic 1963 movies called Canon um, that we rebaptized the Maclarena, um, and install a seating and an area for everyone to be able to partake in both watching other people perform bits of the film as well as uh, enjoying the resulting show. So this is the project that was installed for about two months and it became an excuse to really bring life and highlight the fabric of the people that live in that neighborhood. The projects that we bring to the public need to bring magic. And so one thing that works in the design of these interventions is to make sure that we have different levels of engagement for people out in the street. Not everybody wants to go out there and record themselves. Um, so in the case of this intervention to celebrate a new area that had opened after many years of kind of constructions, um, we decided to install the field of 300 
balloons, which for the passerby was just a way to say, look, your city could be a little bit prettier and we can imagine it together. And, and for the ones who were willing to stop, we inviting them to leave a little note and tell us what they would like to do, who they would like to meet or see in that specific location. And over the course of a day, um, we had this pop-up museum of possibilities that emerged. Um, 300 different proposals were submitted by the public. It became an opportunity again for exchanges and we gave the proposals to the city. The balloons were given to the public and they spread throughout the city um, all day long afterwards. Um, and we just left the possibilities hanging and hopefully inspired people to rethink about that space for the future. We try to transform areas as well. Um, this is an invitation to work on a site that's located again in downtown Montreal, behind the back of the Opera House music venue and the back of the science faculty. Um, and the city said, what can we do to activate that specific location? And something that we try to do and that's been working is to use also existing resources and existing people involved in the communities around that. So in that case, with a scientist and a musician and using these white structures that had been installed there by the city for the various exhibitions, we created a giant collaborative musical instrument composed of 21 swings. Each one can swing on their own, um, but if people start working together, they generate more melodies uh, and more harmonies emerge from that collaboration. <laughs> the project's been an kind of opportunity to really get a variety of generations to encounter each other again, uh, cheat a little bit to be able to collaborate and, and play, uh, and to communicate the fact that together we can make more than just on our own. And that's a project that we're hoping to see traveling as well. So we're doing a version that's going to be standalone and that's being presented in Colorado in a week and hopefully in many other places to invite more people to do just that, make connection with each other through these excuses that we create. So to leave you on a note of why we've been doing that kind of work, I want to quote Michael Sandel when he talks about democracy and says, democracy does not require perfect equality, but it does require that citizens share in a common life. What matters is that people of different social backgrounds and different walks of life encounter one another, bump up against one another in the ordinary course of life, because this is what teaches us to negotiate and abide our differences. And this is how we come to care for the common good. And it's that quest that has been driving our projects and that makes me very excited to be out there and try to inspire you as well to do the same. Thank you.